Hello all, this is Vishnu and welcome to my tutorial. In last session, we had discussed about ClickSense Hub and ClickSense Development Environment. Today, we will be discussing about some basic data transformations and in upcoming videos, we will be discussing about these data transformations very widely. Let me open ClickSense Desktop first. As usual, I am passing my credential and logging into ClickSense. So I am into ClickSense Desktop Hub now. Now let me open the application which, application which we created yesterday that is ClickSense Tutorial. So as soon as I open the application, we are directed to the app overview in which you can see all the sheets, bookmarks and stories which we created. So let me move to the data load editor. So here there is a set of script which we created yesterday. It is just for loading the data from a CSV file and you can see the data connection which we created yesterday. Now. Let me show you how to do some basic transformations here. For that, let me open the CSV file and keep. Okay, the CSV file is up. Let me add some filters here. Okay, now let me move back to the ClickSense. So here, the first thing giving the name for the tables. So it's very important to give the name for the tables when you are when when we are doing data transformation. So uh, the table names are uniquely identified inside the ClickSense for each and every data set. And when we are doing this uh, left join, right join concatenation all those things these table names are very much important so always ensure that you are giving appropriate table names to each and every tables which you are loading into clicksense and if you are not giving any table names by default it will be taking sales train sales train the file name will be taken as table name so if you are loading the data from a database the database name will be taken a database table name will be taken as your clicksense table name so i have a given table name here so if you want to give some table name with some space that also you can give let me give sales uh, data the only thing you have to pass it in the square break brackets and let me just load the data so the data is loaded let me go to the model viewer where you can see the table see the table name is change now now let's see how to avoid columns so let's say uh, we don't want this particular column to be loaded into clicksense so you can just remove the column or comment it by using there's an option to comment on top by using this you can just comment it then you can go for the reload So if you go and see the data model viewer, that particular column is ignored. And the next thing is adding the filters when you are loading the data. Uh, let me open this Excel sheet first. So here I do see many, many values. Uh, for an example, let me put a filter upon item price. So I just need to add only the uh, only the records which is having more than thousand rupees as item price. So as usual, uh, as an SQL query, you can just put a where condition here and write your condition where item price is greater than or equal to 
thousand. Let me save it and reload the data again. Now only six lakhs sixty six thousand records are loaded into ClickSense. So if I come to the UI, you can drag and drop that field and check item price. Little pan. Let me add item price here. So you have only the item prices which is more than thousand here. So that's how in this way you can put conditions on any 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 columns by using any columns just like an SQL query. And now let me show you how to alias the column names. See as as an SQL query you can use as keyword to alias the column name date. So let me rename it to sales date sales date so whenever you are giving a space in any column names or something just put it in the square brackets as data block number number and as shop id ID item price let me say reload the data again so if you go and see the data model viewer you could see all the column names are renamed into whatever alias we had given so in the UI also, you can see all the column names are changed. Let me go back to script editor. Now we will be discussing how to manipulate the data. So let's say you want to round up these, round up these values. You don't need to load it as a floating value or a decimal value. So uh, there are n number of functions available in the ClickSense. There are many useful functions available in ClickSense to transform the data. So you can go to just just Google ClickSense functions. So there are there are basically two type of functions. The functions which could be used in the scripts that is nothing but the functions which could be used in the data transformation layer. And the functions you could be used in chart expressions that is nothing but the functions which could be used in the measures so like you know let me add one chart here let me add a dimension i'll add shop id i'll add sales sum of sales so this is one example for the chart function there are many functions like this which could be used in chart as well as which could be used in data load editor so here you can get the complete uh, complete list of the functions you have aggregate function color function conditional function counter functions uh, daytime formatting functions there are many many there are many functions available here so see statistical distribute functions there are many functions available here so you can just go through these functions once so anyway we will not be discussing all these functions in the upcoming tutorials so from my experience we will be discussing only the most frequently used functions uh, functions uh, for data transformations so let me show you one example to use one function that is let me take this date column i'll go to fields and i'll check the sales date so that say state in this format i don't want the date is in this format i want it something like uh, a normal dd mmmy format so you can just apply the function over here date function 
let me pass the format of that then load the data again okay the sales state is empty because this data which is coming from the csv file this is not in a date format this is in a string format so for managing string format we have one function called date hash so by using date hash function you can convert the string into date so let me take this format and pass it here I'm telling the system that this is the format this is the format the string is in and convert it into date so let me save it reload see the date date has come still the format we haven't changed for that you can use the date function again Let me reload the dashboard. If you go to UI, you can see the format has changed. Like this, there are many, many useful date functions, many, many useful string formatting functions, many, many useful numerical formatting functions, so many statistical functions, color management functions, so many things are available in ClickSense. If you guys could, like, you can go through these functions once, so it will be very useful. Anyway, we'll be discussing most of these frequently used functions in the upcoming tutorials. Now, let me show you another example. So, we had discussed, okay, we wanted to round up the, uh, round up the item price. So you can just use round function here. This is another numerical function. Save it, load it. So you can see the values are rounded up. You can see the values are rounded up. And if you want to write some if statements, those are also possible. So let me create one, 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 one column. I'm saying if item price is greater than thousand, I'm saying high sales or else it should be low sales so this is how we, this is how we write an if statement in click sense so you have to pass the condition first and the statement which has to execute when the value is true is the statement which has to execute when the value is false so i have written this let me remove this word condition because we are filtering out all the records which is greater than 1000 sorry less than 1000 reload the application if you go and see the data model viewer you could see one more column created here but the column there is no proper name for the column the expression itself has come come as the column name here let me show you the data see so I want to give a column name for this particular expression. So um, as usual, I'm using as function as transaction details. So let me save it, load the data, close it. If you come, if you go and see the data model viewer, You can see it as a column called transaction details in UI also. Transaction details. So here the bus part, all these visualizations are connected. So if you want to see only the high sales transaction, you just have to click up on it. See if you see all the values as selected filtered according to your selection here 
and if you want to see only lower sales you just can click over here so you can see the chart is changing accordingly see like this we can create uh, the derive, uh, derived columns and you can filter out the data which will be very useful when you are developing the UI so like this there are many transformations you could do on the data so next session next session onwards we'll be discussing more about how to uh, apply different different frequently used functions on this data and how to populate the data according to our need so if if you guys could go through this list of functions it would be really good and if you guys have any doubt on any of these functions just write out if you have any if you face any problems if you have any doubt just post in the comment 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 section below uh, i'll be replaying for that so that's all today next next session onwards we'll be discussing about different different functions like date functions uh, numerical functions or string for formatting functions etc etc we'll be discussing about discussing in the upcoming sessions thank you thank you all mm -hmm.